Um, his residency in in that period of time is one of the great sort of hedging his bets stories, along with um, his hedging his bets at Bain Capital at the time, and and his whole career of sort of making sure that he keeps all avenues open for himself. And in this case, what he did initially uh, was he had Ann Romney stay back actually in Massachusetts. He wanted her to stay in their Belmont home uh, while the uh, uh, their youngest son uh, was finishing up his last year of high school. And uh, there was a, uh, you know, there was a sense that that for one thing it's sort of a propriety you know he wanted to stay that the kid wanted to stay in the same school and you want to have you know a parent there you know raising the, the child you know even though you know he's a little older but um, but there was also a sense I think of a lot of Romney watchers that 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 was also partly to maintain the residency in case he wanted to come back to, to run and you know you look at that same period of time the debate over when did Mitt Romney really retire from Bain Capital so you look at the same time of Mitt Romney uh, and Bain Capital and how he handled his leave of absence which is sort of how they informally there, there's never been presented any formal uh, you know a document of what happened in 1999, which is very unusual. I mean, it's a private company. They don't have to release these things. But you would think that if the CEO, the, the owner, the, the chairman, you know, the, the, the guy in charge, the president, uh, is going to go off and do something else and not be involved for a while, that there would be some kind of paperwork that they would do. Um, it doesn't appear that there was. It appears that there were conversations. It certainly appears that uh, that there was a, an understanding among the other directors that uh, that Mitt Romney was not going to be involved in the daily sort of day-to-day -day operations the way he had been. Uh, certainly that uh, my understanding is that he was not going to uh, uh, get involved in the, the basically the meetings where they decide which investments to make. Um, but he retained all of those official positions and all of his holdings holding opportunities along the way one of the main ways you get that you get rich through a company like Bain Capital is not salary <laughs> you know and is not your stake in the company per se it is the opportunities that you have to make commissions off of uh, off of the deals that are being made but also to buy into the deals that are being made and so there there's a lot of that you know when when new uh, St. Katie, uh, which is one of the sub sub companies, it's a very complicated corporate uh, existence. Um, but as they opened up new funds, he had the opportunity not only to be technically the owner uh, and and CEO of those funds. Um, so all of that was sort of to hedge his bets so that. He had his options open of whether to go back, you know, if things hadn't gone well uh, with the Olympics, maybe he just goes back and takes over again. But in, in the case of what happened where he, he wanted to uh, run for office and leave the company permanently, um, he could sort of rewrite what the deal was going to be. He was in a position to do that and, and that's why you hear a lot about the retroactive retirement of 1999. That's exactly what it was it, in 2002. Or, you know, 2001, 2002 time frame, they, uh, uh, you know, over a period of time negotiated the details of his 1999 retirement, which set him up very, very well in terms of his, his and his family's financial future and his stake in the company, which is ongoing. Mitt Romney's challenge in trying to win the presidency without revealing very much of himself is uh, is one that he has dealt with in the past, but he's never dealt with with this kind of scrutiny. And, and the scrutiny only gets worse from this point because while he has been the presidential nominee for some time and has been the sort of assumed presidential nominee for even longer than that, um, this is really the campaign. This is when from now on, all the reporters from all the papers from all are going to fill space every day about Mitt Romney and it becomes harder and harder uh, for him to be private about things he's very very good at it his 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 ability to shape 
stories about him and shape perception about him and shape what people think and know and, and even ask about him is exceptional and, and is really what you, you know, when you stop and think about it, is what you might expect from someone who comes out of the business world and is a very, very savvy person from the business world. He's exceptional, you know. So um, I, I like to tell a story about, about Staples, which, um, which of course is one of the companies that he exaggerates his, 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 uh, uh, his role in, but he was involved in funding them at the startup. But, uh, you know, Staples' whole thing was, uh, that was that they don't have actual customer service because you don't need that in selling people, you know, clipboards and stuff like that. You just need to let them know that you have low prices and you have everything they need in stock. And they don't need anybody there. So you can cut all your costs and have a warehouse where nobody actually helps you, but you get what you want. And that worked really, really well until sort of the computer age when suddenly people were buying really complicated things there or things that had to be compatible with things and so they felt like they needed to go somewhere where they had assistance so that they bought all the right things whether they really did or not that was the perception and it was really really hurting them that they had this terrible customer service image so they needed to do one of two things either actually improve their customer service which is a very very expensive thing to do or convince the world that they have great customer service even though they still have the same bad customer service that's the path they took and they were brilliant at it and everyone today knows the staples easy button and everybody today knows how great it is to take your business to staples because they make everything easy for you and it's brilliant and their customer service is exactly the same as it ever was which is terrible so you take that that example and you apply it to selling a a candidate <laughs> and you can see how how good you can be and how good he has been and you know even the lines of questioning that the media and the democrats take on him are the ones he wants them to be taking on him they are asking the wrong sets of questions. They are asking things about tax returns that he knows he, he will never show them if he doesn't want to. He has total control over that. It, you know, and, and there are things that, that they could be asking him that he has redirected them off of the same way that, he, that Staples redirected everybody off of the fact that you can't actually get anybody to help you who knows whether this is compatible with that. So, um, so this is, you know, I'd put my chips on him to, to be able to pull that off.